Hey guys, thanks for watching. Today is the first day that there's been a range open within miles and miles of my house. So if you saw that other video that I made about kind of the process that I did and trying to rebuild my swing, trying to change the motor program in my sequence, which is not easy. So this is going to be like a video I did early on in the channel of basically a practice vlog where I'm going to talk about what I'm working on. And this is going to be a regular series for the really dedicated Be Better golfers. What I'm working on, um, who influenced these ideas, like who I've been talking to, and um, how I'm going to get better using these ideas. So if you've been watching the channel for a long time, you would have seen me do this, this kind of thing early on in the channel. I'm bringing it back. I'm going to make a regular series out of it called uh, What I'm Working On. I'm just really excited to be hitting balls. Now this is my like fourth bucket. Here, I bought two buckets, somebody left a bucket, somebody left this bucket and a half. So that's what I'm working on. So I'm just gonna get, all right, first thing first, you guys will see this thing, which I, I find is really important for me. This is a, Mike Bender sells this thing. It's just like a noodle stand, not a noodle stand, a, uh, it holds a golf shaft, a broken golf shaft perfectly here and then you can adjust this to however you want. So the way I have it here is the way he talks about. Let's see, if I, if I raise up here and go flat, I'd hit this. So it's just like a little bit of a feedback station. Then I come back over here and I try to match that. That's a pretty good shot. You guys, my dream in the future is to do this type of thing and kind of like they have at live from the masters and, and on the range, live on the range. And you, you're able to see like a pro tracer of every shot and exactly what's, um, where the shot's going, what the numbers are. That way it'd be a lot better for you guys to see. Usually I like to do this thing at night so you can see the trace of the, of the shot. I've been doing a lot of FaceTime lessons and stuff like that, so there are A lot of thoughts in my head and th things but that's I mean that's pretty normal like people always say that to me like like how do you even take the club back getting so much information from so many different teachers I'm like well if I had the t if I had the golf the be better golf channel or not I mean that's just gonna be my personality I'm going to always be interested to hear what other people have to say if somebody has a better more clear way of explaining something I mean that's gonna be like, you know, that's going to be me regardless. So I have no chance of escaping that. You know, they say, if they say like, oh, why would you, why, why don't you just stick to one thing? Why do, why do you listen to so much stuff? I'm like, well, you might as well tell me, why don't you grow another foot? That's me. I, and it's a part of what I enjoy about it too. Plus, like, I think that there's a misconception that if I talk to somebody on the channel or if I interview them or something, people think that that's my, if I've interviewed them, that's my new philosophy and that's what I've decided to go with. No, I have a certain set of things that I'm working on and I only really add to that every once in a while. Okay, so let's. Really, see, I was as I was talking, I wasn't thinking about what I was working on, and that one I was okay. So, the problem has been I get taller and my shoulders get flatter in the backswing. Then, from there, you have to do one of two things one, you could just go like this and you'd be over the top and have to throw out the leg and stand the shaft up like this in order to get it back online. And half that, half the time, when you do that it goes left going left. The other way you could do it is when you, if you're gonna stand up, then you gotta kinda really get low and reestablish that. And um, you can see it just having to go in that much time, having to do that is just like, that's not gonna be very consistent at all, is it? No. So what I've been working on is getting this left shoulder more down and getting the pressure to the right, pressure to the left, so I can my level can go down, further down, and then up through the shot. So 
that's what I'm working on as I'm going up through the shot. That was really good. Went a little bit left, and the, the problem I've been having with that recently, let me know, definitely leave any comments to let me know, like, you know, tips or whatever that would help me, but also help you guys. The problem I've been having with that is hitting it fat. Like, if you're going to go here, here, you cannot do what you usually do. You really have to just attack the ball like this and not like this. See, that's been one of my problems is that if I'm higher and I have to hit the ball, I have to do a lot of this punching motion on the way down. So I don't really need that anymore. I can do more of a sweeping or adduction move, abduction move, I think, to hit it. So I can go here. That's good. It's just starting at my target and then and then curving to the left too much. So whenever I have problems with my start line, I gotta put something out here. All right, so I'm gonna try to start right at that stick and then let the curve bring it back. All right, so down, down. Yeah, so that's a lot better line. Still too high though. That's what I was enjoying about hitting off the net. You can always pick a spot on the net, you know, and just, you know, just drill it into that spot. Okay, I don't want to hit too many of the same club. I was talking to Lee Dietrich. Lee Dietrich was on the channel. I had some really popular videos on the channel, actually. Really great guy, really nice. And Lee is like kind of famous in the golf instruction world because Lee, in the early, early, early days of the golfing machine, Lee communicated with this guy called Tom Tomasello, who um, worked with Homer Kelly, who invented the, golf, the golfing machine, wrote the book and everything. Lee really is a knowledgeable guy with the golf swing. And it was interesting to hear him, to talk to him, because what he told me to do, which I'm not doing, as I'm talking, I'm doing none of what I should be doing. What he told me to do comes from another YouTube video. So what Lee said, asked me, he was like, all right, well, when does the backswing start? And I know this is like one of those golf instructor trick questions, you know? So I said, uh, like P3. So P3 would be, this is P1, the start. This is P2, this is P3, right? So once I'm there, that's when I'm starting to go down. So he's like, no. Try to try to pee like 1.5 or uh, sooner even than P2. So the drill that Stephen Fox, the US Amateur Champion, gave me was take it back, stomp, hit it, right? And I get real good impact doing that. And this is like kind of Lee is telling me, okay, well, this is the way you do it to actually bring it on the golf course. So once it's here, about here, really the club is level with your right foot that's when you're starting your transition down so you gotta go and uh it's a real interesting feeling it, it definitely feels like kind of a dance if you watch john senden hit shots and his kind of his footwork it's a lot like that we go and then i told him i was like well there's a little target out there, like 50 yards that you can hoop one into. I told him, I was like, well, I'm doing it pretty well, but whenever I try to build speed, I start raising up again. And he's like, well, I don't see how you could, if you're getting pressure into that, not weight, but press, so this would be weight. Everybody always confuses this, me included. Not getting like shifting this way, right? That would be like getting your mass and everything there. It's like pressure. If you're getting pressure into that right, see every time I get pressure into that right, I get lower actually, you know? He's like, if you're getting pressure into that right, I don't see how you could be raising up. He's like, if you're raising up, then you're not putting pressure into the ground on the way back. So he wants me, it's, so basically like the golf swing, as short as the golf swing is like 1.2 seconds, 
he wants my entire golf swing to be basically um, less than half a second. So because it would be here and then right when I get there, that's when my downswing starts. Everything else is just like a reaction to that. So I try that. So even though it looks like I'm going back and going down, the feel of it is really you're just starting it in motion on the way back and the pressure goes. And then as soon as you start in motion on the way back, that's, that's when you start going forward. It's an interesting, I think I kept my level pretty good there. That's a, that's a nicely compressed strike. And I've been able to get it pretty good. Let me try a baby one with it. I've been able to get it pretty good with wedge. It's a lot harder with the longer clubs. And nine iron. To boil down everything that I'm working on, I mean, and it's, it's kind of a lot, but the level change is the only thing I'm really working on. Just trying to have that good level and then get good impact from that level. So if I go, so that's the only thing I'm working on. That was a beautiful strike. That's the only thing I'm working on. Now, how I do that and how I train for that and how I make that, th that happen can get admittedly pretty complicated. Oh, thank you, bro. Appreciate it. So, the, let's go through some of the ways that, that I've done that. So first we're going to go from, from most recent times backwards. So, and it, it is kind of a circle because we go from, from Stephen Fox, these other things, and then Lee Dietrich, which is basically telling me the Stephen Fox thing in a different way. So the Lee Dietrich thing is weight goes right. And as soon as the weight goes right and the club gets to here, weight starts to go left and then you hit it. So it's that, even though that was super fat. Let's try that again. So it's weight goes right, left, hit it. Oh man, so good. Okay. So then one of the things that was really important with this too, that I did a FaceTime lesson with Tony and he was saying that I was getting too much secondary tilt at a dress, right? And I love changes that you can make at a dress that fix other things. So this did, this did help, but especially with the longer irons. I was hitting my wedges okay, I was hitting the driver like blah, you know, thin. But he said, if you, if you can get this more like that, that's what you want. And not only to be more in this, he calls it an A posture. So imagine like the A that's on Alvin in the chip, chipmunk sweater, that kind of A here. So if you can get more like this, then in transition also, you want to stay like that. You don't want to go here and turn it from A into a reverse K. You want to be here and stay in that A. It's that thing Butch Harmon always talks about covering. So if you stay here and you're covering the ball, which means not tipping back behind it, just covering it with your chest. It's pretty good, a little high though. All right. so. One of those things with covering and staying in that A posture was if I had this Iron Man circle light, you know how Iron Man has that light? You would want that light to go onto the ball there, not here and then up flashing into the sky or the horizon. You want it to here and that way. Lee Dietrich talks about the same thing when he talks about recentering. So you're here, there. So. You're really gonna cover this. That was pretty good. They're consistently drawing and they're consistently starting a yard right of the target and then drawing like four yards. So I wanna start it a little further right, but keep the same shape. So I'm gonna be here and then get that light, shine that light from here onto the ball. So I'm going pressure. That's an instant replay. And the thing is that it helped me a lot with this training that made me miss when I used to do it a lot was uh, I went out into the park and I had my wife watching me and I said, hey, let me know if I'm going d down in my backswing, staying the same or going up. So and no matter what I did, she said, oh, you're staying the same. 
And if I wasn't thinking, I could not go down and back there. The slightest little... Still feels so extreme. Look at it, rewind it and check it out. And that was good training. And um, one time, just for fun, I was like, all right, I'll guarantee you I won't, I will go down in this one. I went like this. And only when I did it, I fatted it so bad that uh, it hurt. I fatted it really, really bad. So it's just, I mean, you gotta, I don't know if I really believe in exaggeration anymore. I used to be like, think that that's how you had to do things to get better, to make a change. I don't really know anymore though. I'm certainly not doing what, you know, if I was doing the differential learning thing, which is more, I think, better for coming up closer to competition time, but if I was doing the differential learning thing and trying to do this, I, this is how differential learning would tell you to do this problem. This would be good, right? Here, level, more level, hitting it. Okay, that would be good. In differential learning, they would say, okay, if that is something you want to learn, what you got to do is don't ever practice the right thing. You want repetition without repetition. They say you want repetition without repetition, meaning if I'm trying to stay down, down, like stay, keep my level lower down, what they would have me do is go really high and hit one. Oh my gosh. Then they would have me go super low and hit one. Okay, and they, they would have me then go super like inside and hit one. High, go high with an inside. Then they would have me go super outside and high. So you're practicing all different wrong ways to do it so your body has to reorganize. And the result doesn't matter. And you would then you would put constraints on yourself. This is called constraint led learning. Put constraints on yourself like, okay, stand on one foot and just hit it good. Okay, so that's the, it's like a challenge. Stand on the other foot and all you gotta do is hit it good. I don't care, you know, don't even think about anything technical, just hit it good. Okay. And they would say that in doing all these different weird ways of hitting it, that eventually your body is going to start to self-organize. If I go down, your body is going to start to self-organize the right way to do it. A mini little session here. Now I'm going to just try to hit it well and zero swing thoughts. Not bad, directly at my target. One of the main things is Hank Haney says you always have to make swing changes in twos. So if I'm making the swing change of staying more down here, then I have to make another change because right now my two mistakes have been I come up and to adjust for that coming up, I'm punching. I'm giving it this too much and too hard. And plus this feels powerful. So, so what Hank would say is, okay, if you're going to do this, then you can't do this. Because now that I'm here, look, if I do that, that's fat. So I got to go like this and this. I either got to get more rotation in my body or more right arm sweeping. And that was great. It's a bald ball, but that was great. Oh, let's hit some drivers. I'm tired as hell already. Let's hit a, hit a lot of shots, and I don't even know what these are gonna look like in the, in the after. Probably not using that thing enough. All right, so everybody always asks, what's different about driver? For me, it's really the same other than you're just not attacking at that downward skiing downward level you can kind of let it out driver i really want to feel 
this spank. You gotta stay real wide. So I got that A position, real wide. Real wide meaning like in that transition. So we're going right, left, jump. Oh, I hit that really good. And you can see the main thing that I saw in those swings from that horrible round that I had playing with Eric Mike Tree, the pro. Eric makes like seven birdies, shoots in the 60s, and of course there's like 7,400 yards in some. And all those swings, I, I, I was up and floating in the air and then falling backwards rather than down and going forwards. Like all my, my energy was to the ball. I was so totally to the ball. And that's the thing about Beyond Great Impact is when I was doing that stuff so much, it was getting me more to the target. So let's do that. We're going down, down, through. That's, yeah, that's really good. It's just turning from right to left. It's a little low. Hit the top of the range net. Really go. That's the one. Now that, I mean, it, it probably, I'm sure it didn't look like it, but to me, the, the, that felt the way that Tiger Woods 2019 swing looked. So, everybody always talks about the uh, Tiger Woods 2000 swing, which was, you know, just perfect in so many ways. But then through, it could kind of hang back and get kind of this like bent look here. It would really snap that knee and get kind of this curved look here, which was in errors before, that was like the spot to, to be. And now, since he had, I think like right here, here, and here, like from there to there, it's totally fused. There is no, there is no like uh, rotation there. They're totally fused together. Plus like he's got other issues with his knee. So he's had to, um, he's, had, he's become a much straighter driver. If you look at like when he won at Zozo and he, when, he, when he won the Masters and when he won the Tour Championship, 2018, 2019. He, I mean, I really didn't see Tiger in the trees and like having to do all these Seve shots like he used to have to do. I think his, his driving really was underrated. And part of that is when he's here, he goes lower, lower, and then he busts through it and he stands right up on it. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't hang out down there at impact for any longer than he has to. He's boom, and he's watching it. And to me, that, that really helps that right side get through. If I go. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, just put that out of the range too. That's really good. So thank you, Tiger, for that. The thing, the thing that I noticed too is because like for a long time I was super into like, you know, Swing Profile, the app that as soon as you hit a shot you get to look back and see what you did. And that's great training for a certain time, you know, where you can hit a shot and then I'd, and then it would go boom, make a noise and it'd, it'd do an instant slow-mo replay of what you just did, which was, it's, it's really an amazing way to practice for a certain period of time. But when you're working on something, that can actually be a setback, so certainly with impact, if you're doing with, I've noticed this with face on videos so much. If you're working on getting uh, lag tension or shaft lean or whatever you're working on in a face on view, um, you can be making a lot of good progress and still be flipping at it. So let's say like you're hitting it better, you're feeling a little bit better, or you're feeling better about your impact and stuff, but then you, you put the video camera on and you see an impact, you're like that, you know? And you're like, oh, I've been working on this for three months. How is my impact still that bad? And then all of a sudden, you'll go like that. The thing is, and it's kind of in that Stonecutter thing that Kobe Bryant had, the poem, the Stonecutter poem, that Kobe Bryant um, famously was photographed in front of after he uh, tore his Achilles. So in that, in that poem, it talks about how, how the Stonecutter, he hits on this rock, you know, 100 times. 200 times, 500 times, 1,000 times, 2,000 times, 3,000 times. And on the 3,000 and first strike, the, the, the rock shatters and crumbles into pieces. And they're saying, you know, even though if he had looked at the, the previous 3,000 strikes, 
he was making progress. He was doing good things. But what they're saying is, is that it's not about that, okay, what did you do differently on that 3,000 and first strike that made it crumble? No, it's, it's all the strikes that came before it. So you can actually be making progress in your golf swing and have there be like really be no physical evidence of that progress because it, definitely improvements in, in the game of golf, they come in like chunks and then there's lo long droughts and then they come in chunks. But if, if you're out there putting the work in, that's the only way that you're going to get closer to getting better. The other thing is that you can't just like mindlessly grind. You, you have to have, you have to have a, a, a direction and a reason for what you're going. But like I was watching the stream of this guy do, do his practice and uh, he keeps talking about the whole time he's practicing, he keeps talking about, and I'll get my wedge out for this because this explains it better. He keeps talking about like, you know, I'm in here, I'm grinding. You know, I'm working really hard. Like my hands are, and his hands were, you know, basically it become like destroyed from golf. It's like my hands are like, are like totally beat up. They're bleeding, I have blisters. And you know, in that kind of like a Rocky montage or Ben Hogan kind of thinking of, like okay what is it going to take to get better you got it you got to be grinding and you do but to think of it as a grind or a slog or like a you know a struggle a fight really i think the the quicker way to get to get better and i learned this from from marcus bell from england is to really not think of it so much as a grind or as like you know we're, i'm working hard i'm sweating you know i hit like i did today i hit 500 balls today you should really think of it as like an exploration so like here and just like be a lot more like a kid with it so here i got this target i don't know how far that is 35 yards from there so that means it's 40 yards from here so i got this target of 40 yards so i'm, I'm going to try to land it in there from really high up okay so i went super high miss left now i'm going to try to fly it in there super low That's nice and low and almost hit it, missed it by about a foot. Now I'm going to try to shut the face totally and still hit it high though. <laughs> that was really good actually. Now I'm going to try to open the face, got it like wide open, but still hit it very low. That was really good. Oh, hit it. <laughs> almost hit it. So, uh, so that, that's like, you know, that's more of like an exploration. So, so there is a time for grinding and for, for, you know, getting blisters on your hands and working super hard, but there's also a time for just learning what it is to hold a golf club and where the leading edge is and, and be creative and be athletic. You do need certain components though to unleash that athleticness. All right, so let's go down, down, through. Oh, that was a great shot. Kind of spun up in the air, but that'd be dead straight. So one thing I've been talking to John Novosel a lot, and you guys will see a video on this coming up in the future. He's, he has this book com coming out called Tor Tempo, The Force. In that he talks about in short game shots, let me grab my wedge. Oh, I got one minute left. All right, so Tor Tempo, The Force, that's a whole, that's a, that's a long, it's gonna be a long discussion. So basically the force is one part back, one part down. This is the force, not the, ten, not the time. And then full swing, it's one part back, two parts down. That's tour tempo of the force. But we'll talk about that next time. Stay tuned. Thank you guys for um, being so dedicated to getting your games better. And uh, let me know what you're thinking. Bye.